Hi everyone, this is Matt Touchot with Intro Stats. Today I'm really excited, we're starting to get into our two population hypothesis tests. So today we're going to be looking at uh, two population proportion hypothesis tests, which is very famous. We're trying to compare percentages from two populations. So a very important concept in stats. So uh, let's get started. Um, we've just to review a little bit, we've already kind of covered hypothesis testing in general. So you already know a pretty good idea of how null and alternative hypothesis works. You've already kind of got ideas of how to use a test statistic to determine significance with uh, critical values. You've already kind of seen uh, p-value and how p-value works and what p-value can tell us about uh, sampling variability or as a lot of people in the stat world say random chance. Uh, and you also kind of learned how to write conclusions to hypothesis tests. So you've already got a good idea, and we've already sort of covered one population hypothesis testing. So you kind of have an idea of how a hypothesis test works. Um, now we're going to be moving to these more advanced hypothesis tests. Well, advanced hypothesis test for intro stats. There's always more advanced stuff out there. I always tell my students, uh, stats is like a deep well of knowledge that people spend their whole lives studying. And uh, we're kind of right now just playing in, the, in, the, in a puddle, right? We're getting just a little bit of what's really out there. All right, so let's get back to this two population proportion hypothesis test. So in these new hypothesis tests that I'm showing you, um, again, I'm, you already have this, these ideas of how hypothesis tests work, and these work the same way. There's really a few things that you want to look at. Um, what is the null and alternative hypothesis? So as we go through each one of these more advanced tests, I want you to ask yourself sort of these four questions always. What is the null and alternative hypothesis? Because it is different for each test. Um, also, what type of data do we need to perform this test? Right? So that, that would be a key question to ask yourself and have an idea of what the data would look like. Um, assumptions. Very important, right? Remember, it's hard to say something about populations unless your sample data is really, really good. So if you've got a, a bad bias sample data, we're not going to really able to, able to say much about populations. So we want to make sure we check assumptions. And of course, what test statistic are we using? Um, as the data gets more and more complicated, we've developed more and more complicated test statistics to deal with that data. So we're going to be kind of seeing, always ask yourself these four questions as we, as we move into this. So this is just going to be a quick thing on two population proportion. So two population proportion hypothesis test. So let's start with the null and alternative hypothesis, right? What does the null and alternative hypothesis look like? So the null and alternative hypothesis. So those of you who don't know, H0 stands for null hypothesis. We said already that that was um, uh, a statement about the population that involves equality. It's usually some kind of equal statement. And then we have the alternative hypothesis, H usually denoted by HA, which is uh, some kind of statement about the population that does not involve equality. Okay, so um, also a lot of times in relationships or cause and effect, uh, HA is usually the cause and, the cause and effect, the effect, uh, or it is related. Um, usually the null hypothesis is no effect or no, not related. So what would those be for a two population proportion hypothesis test? Well, okay, so basically you're comparing two populations. So depending on what letters, two letters we use in stats for a population percentage or a population proportion. Um, some people use P, some people use Pi. So it just depends on what your stat teacher is using. Um, I tend to use Pi, but I'm kind of old school that way. And mainly because there's like so many different things in stats that are all denoted by the letter P. And it gets confusing to know which P are you talking about when you start using P in stats. It's like there's all these kinds of different things that are denoted by the letter P. So I tend to use Pi, but I'll kind of show you with P or Pi. So basically, I'm gonna, my null hypothesis is going to be something like pi 1 equals pi 2. Right? Something like that. So usually they're equal, uh, pi 1 equals pi 2, and maybe the alternative hypothesis might be uh, pi 1 is greater than pi 2. The population percentage for population 1 is higher than for population 2. And again, we'll have one of them will be the claim, uh, depending on what the person thinks is true at the time, so um, 
So we don't know exactly what the claim is. Maybe the claim is that the population percentage for this, this one population is higher than population two. So maybe this is our claim. Now we learned already how to just note whether it's a right tail, left tail, or two tail test. Remember, greater than looks like an arrow pointing to the right. right? That's kind of the trick for it. Air greater than points to the right, so this would be a right tail test. Okay, but you could also have left tail or two tail, uh, depending on what the HA sign was. Um, so this would be a right tail test. So let's write that down, right tail test. Again, HA always determines the test. Not claim, never null, never the claim, always HA. HA, the symbol in HA determines the test. So HA looks like an arrow pointing to the right, and that would be a right tail test. Okay, so but that's stuff we've gone over in the past. So the one thing that's tricky about two population, confidence, uh, two population hypothesis tests is that you need, um, you can write them in different ways. So I could also have written this in a different way. Now what, the, what they're doing is they're basically just doing a little algebra on you. Yeah, I know, they're just throwing algebra at you. So if you just subtract mu uh, pi 2 from both sides, you get the following. So you could also write this same null and alternative hypothesis, same right tailed test, it's actually equivalent. What you'd get is this. You get that pi 1 minus pi 2 would be equal to 0, and pi 1 minus pi 2 is greater than 0. So this is where we get into this idea of 0. 0 is a really big number in two population hypothesis tests. Uh, a lot of times in a computer program it'll ask you what's the hypothesized difference, and the default when you go to the computer program will say uh, 0. 0 will already be put in there. What they're talking about is this. This is where the 0 comes from. Now these two are equivalent. You could write either one. In my classes, I, I allow my students to write either one. But I do need you to know that they're equivalent because sometimes a computer program might write it like this and sometimes you might see it like this and you want to know that these are really equivalent statements. So this would still be the same claim. Okay? So usually the null and alternative hypothesis will have something about you know, pi 1 equals pi 2. Now again, if you're in a stack class that's using p, it's the same idea. You, you would write it same way. I would just write p1 equals p2. And I would write it as p1 is greater than p2. Or if I subtract the p2 over, I could write it as p1, p1 uh, minus p2 equals 0. And P1 minus P2 is greater than zero. Again, you'll see computer programs write it this way. Um, so it just depends on what stat class you're in, if they're using pi as the population percentage or they're using P as the population percentage. But it means all means the same thing. So if I see a two population proportion hypothesis test, this is what I'm looking for, something that looks like this. All right. So. Let's see here. Um, now let's look at, we kind of look at what the null and alternative hypothesis look like. Now uh, I'm going to look at what type of data are we dealing with. So what type of data? Well, when you're comparing uh, proportions from two populations, so what we need is some sample, categorical sample data from two populations. So we need some categorical, uh, so our data is going to be, um, we're going to need some categorical sample data. I would say hopefully unbiased, right? <laughs> hopefully unbiased categorical sample data. So <laughs> I'll put this down, unbiased, but it's pretty hard to get uh, totally unbiased data. Uh, but that's what we're looking for. We're looking for some categorical sample data from two, from two populations. So we'll probably have just a count. So you'll have like a count from uh, group one and a count from group two um, out of the total for group one and the total for group two. So a lot of times you'll see, you might see those as X1. That's sort of like the number of successes or sometimes you'll hear number of events. 
Um, and then N1 would be the, uh, sometimes you'll see them say that that's the sample size, or some computer programs say the number of trials. Depends on the computer program, right? That's the thing. Computer programs don't always agree in terms of what language they're using. But it's just going to be how many people, you know, smoked out of the total in group in sample one, right? How many people smoked in, in group two out of the total, right? So we're comparing a sort of the same variable in two groups. That's kind of the big idea, but it has to be categorical data. So again, this is not numerical measurement data, this is categorical data. So again, we'll have an X1 for number of successes, and then we'll also have um, an X2 and an N2, right? So how many, how many people smoked? Again, this will be the number of successes or events and number of trials, okay? And then, of course, if we divide these two, we can get our p hat, our, our, our sample percentage, right? This works, by the way, the data actually works a lot like when we did two population confidence intervals, really same, same kind of data. So we got our sample p hat, remember, means sample percentage or sample proportion. I really should specify it is proportion. It's supposed to be the decimal equivalent of the percentage. Um, that's going to be our, our sample proportion from group 1 and we got our p hat 2 put a little hat on the p make it a little nicer so p hat 2 is our sample proportion from group 2 and again what we're going to be doing really is using comparing these and using um, a test statistic to sort of figure out if this data significantly disagrees with the null hypothesis or not. So we're kind of going back to the null hypothesis and trying to see if the data disagrees with the null hypothesis, which is really how all hypothesis tests work. You're going to have some sample data and you have to figure out a way to judge how well that agrees or disagrees with your null hypothesis. Okay? So we're really looking for that. So this is what our data should look like. Okay? So that's what our data should look like. All right, let's see. Now, what was our, we did, we did null and alternative hypothesis. We did what type of data? What are the assumptions? Well,